Alright, so this time we're going to talk about starting to generate the bricks in the scene. Um, the games that we're kind of emulating here have a kind of a neon aesthetic to it. So we're going to be using some of the art assets that we've already imported to try to mimic that. Uh, despite the fact that none of the art assets actually have um, actually look very neon. So this is our game view. So I'm going to go into our art folder here. So over on the side, I'm going to look in the art folder. And I want to look at the glass elements. Um, the reason I want to look at the glass elements is the way we're going to make the colors change is we're going to change the color that's overlaid on top of the sprite editor. And these glass elements are the closest to white so they're going to take the color overlay best. If we were to use the metal, these are gray, they'll still take color, but it won't look as good. Uh, if we use the uh, stone, same problem, and if we use the wood, it's even worse because there's a lot of color already on there. So we're going to use the glass elements. I'm going to focus on two specific glass elements. I'm going to get this triangular one. So what I want to do is I want everything to take up one unity unit. And this, if you'll see down here, is 70 pixels by 70 pixels. So to make that happen, I'm going to change its pixels per unit to 70. I'm also going to change the filter mode from bilinear to no filter. And then I'm going to make its max size uh, 128, because I don't have to have all that 2048. I'll apply this, and then I'm going to drag this into my scene just so I can kind of see it. And set it right about there. Um, next, I'm going to create one of these square bricks. And for me, I'm going to use uh, this square brick down here that doesn't have any kind of glass reflections in it. Again, this is 70 by 70, so I'm going to change the pixels per unit to 70 so that this is going to take up exactly one unit a unit left to right and up and down. I'm also going to change the filter to no filter. I'm going to change the max size to 128 because we don't need the full 2048. And I'll apply that, and then I'll drag this into the scene as well. All right, so the first thing we're going to deal with is the color of these. So if I take a look here, actually rename these two, I'll call this triangle brick, and I'll call this one square brick. Okay, now uh, if I highlight the square brick and look over here at its sprite editor, I want to focus on the color for just a second. So I'm going to go look at the color, and if I change this, you can see that because it's pretty close to white, um, the color overlay looks nice and true and almost exactly like what it should be. So I can just kind of cycle through these colors here. We're going to create an effect similar to that using a script. So um, let's get to it here. Let's go to our scripts. Uh, let's right click, uh, create, and we're going to create a new C sharp script. And I'm going to call this brick color controller. And so let's go ahead and open this up in mono develop. And we're going to use uh, some coding to implement those different colors. So um, first things first, I'm going to create a var global variable at the top of the script. And this global variable is going to be the number of colors that can be referenced from the bricks. So I'm going to create a public gradient, and I'm just going to call it gradient. All right, save this really quickly. I'm going to hop back into Unity, and I'll show you what this creates. I'm also going to attach this script to both of the bricks. All right, so now um, this gradient creates this thing that looks like it's just pure white. So by default, the gradient has no colors in it. But if you click on it, you can come up to this gradient editor. And the gradient editor allows you to add a string of colors to this. So for example, if I want this first color to be like a super bright red, and I'm going to say I want this last color to be also a bright red. Now, what I'm going to do is in between here, if you just click on the bottom, the bottom controls the color and the top controls the alpha. If I just click on the bottom, I'm going to have this be, let's say, a really vibrant purple. Click somewhere else on the bottom, 
and make this a really vibrant blue. Click somewhere else on the bottom. Make this, uh, I don't know, almost like a teal. Somewhere else on the bottom, I'll make this a really vibrant green. I want to go vibrant. Let's change these two. Yep, no, that was... Make that more vibrant. And cool. All right. Uh, click here, and I'm going to make this a really vibrant yellow. And I'll click here. I'm going to make this a super vibrant purple. Oh, no. Let's go orange. There we go. Cool. Now, if you want these to have, like, for example, maybe you want less red over here, you can adjust their placement. Undo what I just did. Make them a little more evenly spaced so that you can evenly get any of those colors. Now, this is blended, which means that it could be any of these colors in between any of these other colors. If you want it to be specifically just these colors I chose, and then up here on the mode, you can change that to fixed. And then it'll only be one of these colors here. I kind of like the way it looks when it's blended. Um, I'm also going to click new to save this gradient down here. You can see I have a few other gradients that I've worked on and I have added to my palette. Uh, okay, so that's the first thing. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a reference to the sprite renderer that's on the uh, object itself. I'm going to make this reference private, but you can make it public, and then you can just pull the sprite renderer into it from the editor. So I'm just going to do private sprite renderer, and I'm going to call it um, renderer. And then because I made it private, if I don't assign it in the code, then it won't know what the sprite renderer is, and I'll get a null reference exception. Null meaning nothing. It means that the code doesn't know what to put there. So I'm going to make sure that in my start method, when I first start this up, I'm going to um, assign that renderer to an object that's on the, the uh, same object that this script is attached to. So I'm going to say renderer is equal to get component. And I'm using get component because I'm getting a component of the same object that this is attached to. If I was referencing something that this script weren't attached to, I'd have to use find objects of type or make it public. And I'm going to so get component um, sprite renderer. So now I know what the renderer is. The other thing I'm going to do is as soon as the scene starts, I'm going to say renderer.color is equal to gradient.evaluate and I want it to evaluate between uh, two things and it's going to evaluate random.range 0 1 okay so when I save this I'm gonna go back in here and see if I made any errors Looks like I've got some in hides. I think that's actually okay. So let's hit play here, and see what happens. All right, so it worked for this one, but it did not work for the other one. I wonder why. They both have sprite renderers. Let's try hitting play again. Hmm. Oh. I didn't assign the gradient for the square brick. So I'm going to assign my gradient as the same one from before. There we go. So now they both have gradients. So if I hit play, you see that they chose to be red. And the reason that they're choosing to be red is because right now this is choosing integer values between 0 and 1, not including 1, which means that it's only choosing 0, which is the value at the very, very end here. So I want it to be able to choose values all the way in between here. To do that, I need to change my random dot range from 0 to 1 to 0f and 1f. And that changes it from being uh, integer values, which can either be 0 or 1, uh, no decimals, to being float values. And float values can be decimals. So by doing that, I'm going to save my script. 
I'm going to go back into Unity. Uh, it's going to think for a second. And now when I hit play, it should choose two random colors. One of them's green, one of them's red. Now they're both yellow, both red, and blue and orange. So it chooses these colors at random. Um, and you can change you know, the colors that you have if you want to make it look more vibrant. Um, I have a gradient I worked on earlier that I thought produced some cool colors. I'm going to change them both to that gradient right now. Uh, okay, so if I hit play, it kind of creates this, I, I really like green and blue, and so it creates these kind of cool green and blue colors. Um, okay, so that is how you can change the colors of your bricks in your scene um, so that they're appearing a little more vibrant and your scene just has a little more uh, interest to it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, otherwise, have a great day.